Legends, it's history. Live from WJZ 13, you've got Baltimore's favorite news team. Now, Eyewitness News. Some Marylanders dreaming of a white Christmas miss it by only a day. Hello, everybody. I'm Pat Warren, and here's what people are talking about tonight. The big chill brings snow flurries and a chance that you'll see a few flakes yourself. Dr. Bob is live in the Eyewitness News Outback with the first warning on the white stuff. Hi, Dr. Bob. Hey, Pat. Yes, it is. It's, kind of, it's cold enough out here to support some snow. Temperatures in the mid-30s, and a number of you have called the newsroom to report that you have seen some snow flurries in your neighborhood. And, in fact, that was expected, and it is not going to amount to anything, although since it is the Christmas weekend, it is kind of nice to see a little bit of the white stuff falling. Let me show you the radar to pinpoint where this stuff is. First warning radar shows those light blue areas are the areas of precip, some of it not reaching the ground, some of it coming to the ground, but it is all very light, spread mostly north of the city, although out in Howard County, we had a few reports from that direction of some snow flurries. And what this is is the leading edge of another surge of colder air coming into the area. It's not really stormy enough to produce any accumulation. Maybe way out in the hills of Western Maryland, there may be a little bit of a dusting out there. But as far as we're concerned here, it's just a little bit of snow that can really be called flurries. Not going to be a problem at all. When you get up for wake up tomorrow, to, ooh, go back to work after the Christmas weekend. Look for a mix of clouds and sunshine. We'll call it partly cloudy. It's going to be breezy enough to be brisk and it's going to be seasonably cold at 24 degrees when i come back with the full first warning forecast in a few minutes we'll look at the next five days which carries us all the way up to the end of 1999 pat we can hear that wind out there in your microphone bob indeed it is windy here and that's an added feature to the uh 35 degree temperature the wind chill probably down around the mid 20s right now that's so, pretty cool. yeah <laughs> thank you bob stay with eyewitness news and first warning weather for the absolute latest on the changing forecast and updates on road conditions around the state a carload of Cecil County residents had three strikes against them and a winding road took them out. A driver boozing and barreling along at breakneck speed with passengers who didn't buckle up hit a tree and four people were killed. Eyewitness News rode with state police tonight who hope this tragedy will serve as a warning to others. Brenda Carl joins us live with some very useful information. Brenda. Hi, good evening, Pat. Seven fatalities recorded on Maryland highways this holiday weekend. Six fatalities reportedly involved alcohol four people killed in a terrible crash in Cecil County. Well, tonight, Eyewitness News and the Maryland State Police take you on a ride along as we go in search of safety behind the wheel. Looking for uh, speeders, people who are making uh, improper lane changes, overall aggressive drivers out here this evening. Also, we're looking for, since it's a holiday weekend, looking for intoxicated drivers as well. Trooper First Class David Dwyer patrols one of the busiest sections of I-95 through Maryland. Tonight, he offers Eyewitness News useful information on driving throughout this holiday week. He wants to ensure that you arrive at your destination alive. When you're traveling, if you do come across an aggressive driver, somebody's tailgating you or giving you problems on the road or flashing their lights at you, instead of uh, creating more of a problem, just slide over to your next lane, get out of the way, let them go by. State police say the driver of a car which crashed here in Cecil County yesterday, killing four people, did just about everything wrong. Evidence of alcohol, high speeds, and lack of safety belts all contributed to the multiple fatalities. People traveling home are tired. Also, we're looking for the people who've been drinking this evening, late parties, or coming back from the football game since it's been a busy weekend. And you don't have to be driving drunk to be dangerous on the highway. One of the problems is going to be the tired drivers who've been driving for five or six hours on the road. Instead of pulling over, they feel they can make it the extra couple miles down the road. Sometimes they not all fall asleep, and that's when some of the accidents happen. Some very good advice tonight, and thank you very much, Trooper Dwyer. Police have identified uh, the other two victims in that crash in Cecil County, 40-year-old Stanley Fleming of Conowingo and the front seat passenger, 40-year-old Michelle Frymiller of Perryville, Maryland. So, Pat, some good advice from state police tonight. Take it easy if you're out on the roads in the coming week. That is good advice. Thank you, Brenda. Reckless driving can make you your own worst enemy, but there's an even more sinister threat this holiday season. A terrorism alert may help the FBI track down a man they've been trying to get their hands on since December 14th. 
With one suspected terrorist already in custody under heavy guard, federal investigators are now on the trail of his alleged accomplice, Abdel Majid Dahoumani. Only one day after authorities released his picture, a ticket agent at Horizon Airlines in Bellingham, Washington, recognized the man and called authorities. The employee reported Dahoumani bought a plane ticket at the airport Friday for a flight from Bellingham to Seattle with a connection to Las Vegas. He flew to Seattle, but it's not known if he made it to Nevada. The agent reportedly told the FBI Dahoumani had a French passport and paid in Canadian dollars. He was also said to be argumentative and sarcastic. Dahoumani is believed to be the man who stayed at this Vancouver motel with Ahmed Rassam just days before he was caught trying to cross the border with 20 pounds of explosives. And with celebrations fast approaching, there's fear both men may be part of a wider plot, but no one is sure. It is very difficult to collect intelligence uh, on these types of groups. They're uh, fringe uh, groups or groups of individuals that have come together in an ad hoc way. And experts say terrorists are getting bolder in their attempts to strike on American soil. At one point, America's geographic isolation gave it a measure of immunity. That's no longer the case. Now, federal investigators stress there have been no specific threats against any American cities, but they're doing everything they can to make sure Americans can bring in the new year safely. Eyewitness News will continue to bring you the absolute latest on the search for Dahumani and the continuing terrorism alert. There are probably some of you out there who are a lot less alert than you'd like to be after making that trip home from the Christmas visit. And the threat of terrorism didn't make that trip go any faster either. Holiday travel continues to keep people busy tonight, and that includes heavy traffic through BWI. But it was a happy landing for many of the thousands returning home to the Baltimore area today. And that's a big area. It includes all of Maryland and passengers from Virginia and Washington, D.C. In fact, being so close to Washington, D.C. is why BWI WI is getting special attention. We have our usual security that's here. Uh, the security checkpoints, as you know, are uh, operated by the airlines. We will have extra people here on New Year's Eve. We'll have a lot of our staff will be here in place, but we don't expect any problems because everything's been checked. BWI reports no major delays for travelers today, and the same goes for the folks coming in and going out of Penn Station traveling by train. That light at the end of the tunnel for weary holiday shoppers turned out to be a train as people were hit by the lure of after Christmas sales. Eyewitness News was in Towson today where Katie Lahan found folks stocking up for next year. The day after Christmas, it's every shopper's favorite four letter word, sale. Are you buying or returning? Buying today. What did you get? Um, just picking up some Christmas ornaments. And why today? Because they're half price. Usually it's way too expensive, and now it's regular price. You're saving a lot of money? Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so. At least I hope so. Yeah, I think I will. Towson Town Center was busy with bargain hunters, most looking for items they'll use next year. Christmas supplies, shopping paper, ribbons. For those. next year? Yes, stash it and put it away for next year. Last year, consumers did 11% of their holiday shopping on the day after Christmas. And with sales like this, there's no wonder why. $205. Today is also the busiest time for returning and exchanging gifts. American Express found 46% of people recently surveyed said they return between 1 and 10 gifts on this day every year. So you're going to buy something else? No. Returning this, then we're going over to Nordstrom's. With sales expected to jump $180 billion this year, retailers are already planning for what will be in store next year, Holiday 2000. Oh my gosh, you are totally loaded down. Yeah. What are you buying? Uh, presents for next year. Really? You're already planning ahead, huh? Right. Yeah. And how, how much of a bargain are you getting? 50% off. Can't beat it. Katie Lahan, WJZ Eyewitness News. How's he know what people are going to want next year? Retail internet sites are also slashing prices. Time now to check in with Stan Saunders in the Sports Palace. Should I put my Christmas order in with you now, Stan? You're talking about for 2000, That's 2001 right. or what? Whenever. Whenever. Yeah, it's in. I don't know how far to go, but it's in. Hey, listen, the Ravens shut up the Bengals, shut down the Bengals, and then shut them out. We'll listen to the coaches and the players once we come back to sports in a couple of minutes, plus all the NFL highlights you just can't stand. Pat. Plus today marked the beginning of the week-long observance of Kwanzaa, and music legend Curtis Mayfield has died. Stay with us. Eyewitness News we will be right back. You're watching Eyewitness News with Pat, Dr. Bob's Winter, and Stan Sports.
people who help make Eyewitness News Baltimore's favorite news team.